Hello everybody, I'm Nick and in this video I'm so excited because I get to show you how you can compile your ASP.NET Core APIs to native code using native AOT. That's right, I'm on the latest .NET 8 preview and now we have access to that feature that allows you to take C Sharp and .NET code and compile it to native code the same way C++, Go or Rust would compile and run. So no .NET dependency, no IL code, no JIT, just super fast startup times and a very memory efficient and small API. Now keep in mind that this is technically still in preview and more things will come out, but we're going to see what works, what doesn't, how you can get started, and some very nice performance metrics. If you like the above content and you want to see more, make sure you subscribe ring the notification bell and for more training, check out my courses on dometrain.com. That is right, nickchapters.com is no more. If you go and try to access that website to find my courses, you will be redirected to a brand new website called dometrain.com. Dometrain is a new brand for me where I'm going to be hosting all of my existing courses and any future ones. Not only that, but there's some really, really cool stuff coming and I can't wait to announce it, but that's for another time. For now, to celebrate the launch, I'm offering the first 100 of you a 15% discount on any of my courses. So go to dometrain.com, check out the courses, whether that is testing, dependency, injection, REST APIs, minimal APIs, just find what you want and use code LAUNCH at checkout to get a 15% discount on anything. Now back to the video. All right, so let me show you what I have here. I have a simple .NET 8 API and I want to show you the CS Proj first. There is nothing new here except really for this parameter, which is just a new thing we now get in the templates, but it's irrelevant with everything we're going to see in this video. And then I have effectively what is a minimal API with a simple web application builder. We build the application and then we map those weather endpoints in here, boilerplate stuff. And if I just quickly run this just to show you what I have, um, this should start anytime. Now, this is not native OT. This is just a normal .NET application as it is right now. And I'm going to go here, call the weather, and that's the experience you get. We get five random weathers in a forecast and that's it. And that's the application I'm going to turn into a native AOT application. Now, before I show you how you can turn this into a native AOT API, I want to very quickly change this create build to create slim builder. This is a new method that registers the minimal amount of services required for our API. And just so we have better control in terms of what is being registered, I'm going to switch to that. Now, in terms of what you need to do to turn this into an application that compiles to native AOT, code, all you really need to do on your project configuration side of things is actually go here in the property group and say publish AOT and set this parameter to true. And that is it. Now I can go to the console and I can say, hey, publish this in release mode. And if I do that, what's going to happen is, as you can see over here, the uh, Windows specific, Windows 64 specific version will start being triggered, generating native code, as you can see, compilation for even a very small app took some time and then you can see that now we have our native OT application published in here. And if I go to the published folder and I say .NET and I try to run the API, you're going to see it doesn't actually run because it is not a .NET API, it is a native code API. So all I need to do is just run the exe and that's it. The API is running and you might have noticed it was extremely fast. It started just instantly. I can just stop it again, start it again. Look how fast it is. Now, if I go on Postman and I try to call this with this running, I'm actually going to get an error. It's not going to work. And that's because native AOT applications are a bit different. You need to think differently because due to the fact that native code has to be generated, some things just won't work. For example, reflection-based uh, JSON serialization would not work here. So we need to actually do some hand-holding. And thankfully, the .NET team over the past years and with .NET 8 as well, has given us the tools to allow us to do that. For example, source generation is a big part of what makes native AOT possible. And that's the first thing we actually need to take care of. So here, what I actually have to do is configure the JSON serializer to use a source generated one because it is needed for native AOT. So what I'm going to do here is create a new class called API JSON serializer context. Now you might have seen this already. This is something you can do, I think since .NET, six or five it's been around for a long time so you make that context then you extend the json serializer context and then you slap an attribute on it called json serializable and you specify the type of the type you want to have a source generator for so in our case what we need is as you can see over here this weather forecast array so i'm going to just copy that type paste it here and then change this to partial and that is it. A source generator will come in and implement this context. And if we actually go here, you can see 
all this source generated code based on that parser class. And that is it. Now that I have this, I need to go over here to the services and say builder.services.configure HTTP JSON options. We're going to have the options here and then say options.serializer options and then type info resolver equals new API serializer context. And that is it. That's the change I need. And actually, if I just go here and republish this project, which again, take some time because it is heavier to generate native code than just the IL code needed that the CLR will eventually run. There is none of that here. Then as you can see, it is published. I'm going to go here and say, run it very fast to start again. And now I can go ahead and say send. And now it works and it's very, very fast. Now you have to understand something very, very important. When we talk about native AOT, it is not necessarily the speed of the application during runtime that will improve because the JIT is actually very fast and the optimized JIT version will be in some cases as fast as native AOT. And actually in many cases, the native AOT runtime code can be uh, slower. So don't necessarily expect that the runtime speed of a native AOT application will be faster than the runtime compiled version. It is not the case, or at least it's not necessarily the case. That's not the point. The point is startup time, smaller startup time, smaller disk footprint. So when you actually build the thing, it is smaller, which actually heavily benefits you if you're building things like Docker images to run your application. And then third, the runtime memory used by the application is way, way smaller as well. So these are the three things you really are looking for. And we can actually observe all of them. So I'm going to stop this application. I'm going to clear this. And what I'm going to do first is actually roll back the native AOT thing. I'm still going to leave my JSON serializer because that's fine. I like it. And to actually measure how long the application takes to start up, what I'm going to do is go here and say uh, start time. So I'm going to get a start timestamp here using the stopwatch dot get timestamp when the application actually starts. And then what I can do is I can actually take the lifetime application from the service container. So I can say app dot services dot get required service I host application lifetime. And I can wire up an event that fires when the application has started. So I'm going to say lifetime dot application started dot register. And I'm going to register an action over here. And all it's going to do is say console dot write line. I'm not even going to use a logger here. And I'm going to say stopwatch dot get elapsed time from that start time. So basically get the delta and I'm going to print that using the total milliseconds. So how many milliseconds did my application take to start? Now, keep in mind, this is a very small application, but I want you to see the difference between the two types of applications. So I'm going to go back here. I'm going to build it, publish it in release mode in runtime. So not native AOT here. And then I'm going to go here and simply say .NET and the DLL to run the application. So if I run it, as you can see, this took 128 milliseconds to start. Now I'm going to stop this over here. I'm going to go back here and I'm going to revert that change to turn this into a native AOT. So I'm going to go here and republish it this time in native code, in native AOT. So generating that native code, it's going to take a few seconds. And once that's done, I'm going to go here, clear this so you can see everything. And I'm going to say, run this. Let's make sure it's run. Yes, it is. And if I run it, 16 milliseconds, 16 milliseconds to start the full application from 128. That is insane. It's a almost 10 times faster execution time, which is insane because if you're using something like this in an AWS Lambda, for example, your cold starts are minimized to effectively nothing. It is just nuts how good it is. And it's just the first preview. This can only realistically get better. So it's very, very impressive. And that's just speed. Let's take a look at disk space, how big the application is when it's compiled. So what I want to do is actually comment out this native AOT thing. I already have it compiled. And what I need to do now is turn this into a single sort of file executable that packages the runtime in it. The previous way that we could potentially get the same experience as with native AOT, but not quite. So to achieve that, what you need is to mark this as an executable. And then you want to say that publish this as a self-contained file. And then what you need to say is publish single file. It is self-contained and specify the runtime identifier. So if I do a quick clean to make sure that nothing exists over here and then clear everything, and then all I need to do is say .NET publish C release. And that's going to be a single executable that actually packages that runtime with it. So now how big is this application? Let me show you. It is 90 megabytes 
big. I can run it and it runs and I can call it as you can see and it took 138 milliseconds to execute. So if I run it, it works fine through this, but it's 90 megabytes because it publishes everything into that single file. Now I'm going to do the same thing with native AOT. So I'm going to comment everything out here, then go here uncommon native AOT and republish this thing, but as a native AOT application, how big do you think it is? 8.7 megabytes, everything, the whole thing. And if I just double click it, it works as an API, super fast, 16 milliseconds to start. Like that is insane. How fast? 14 milliseconds to start. And, and as you can see, it still works. As you can see, it handles those requests over here, no problem. So from 90 to 8, and sure you can trim it with the single file and ditch some things that are not used, but it's always very tricky to know what can go in and what can't go in. That's a great improvement. So startup time and disk space, clear wins. But what happens with runtime memory? Well, let's take a look. I'm going to revert this to a non-native AOT application and rebuild it. So I'm just going to quickly say publish it. And then I'm going to go just simply and run it and see what's happening in my task manager over here. So I expect it to appear underneath terminal. So I'll just go to publish and just say .NET and run that DLL. DLL is running 120 milliseconds to start. And as you can see, it only consumes 5.3 megabytes. However, the moment I start doing something like sending a single request, you can see the memory go to 12. And of course, this is how memory works in an application. The more you allocate, the more it grows. But we are around 12.1 megabytes where you introduce some workload. That is very, very good. Very, very impressive. Now I'm going to go ahead and enable native AOT here and publish this as a native AOT application. So I'm going to go quickly here and say publish this. And then I'm going to go into the native folder, the published native folder, and I'm going to run the API. So I'm going to bring up this again and just run it. And as you can see, we're sitting at around 13.1 megabytes. So we started with 9 point something in the first one and we reached 12. Now we're 13.1, so higher. However, when I introduce some workload here, you will only see the memory to spike all the way up to 14. So not three megabytes like the runtime version, but only one because native AOT applications can reduce the memory requirements to execute. So that's why you're seeing this smaller difference here. And even though it is overall higher, the memory seems to be managed in a better way. Now, with all that said, does it mean that you can go ahead and just make all your applications native AOT? No, it, it doesn't. Actually, it's a huge endeavor, which I can't see being the norm, maybe until .NET 10. But seeing this being an option now means that people who need to start doing the work to make sure we can not use it in one or two years have the tools to do it. And that's more specifically in NuGet packages, because assembly loading fancy things like this can actually destroy the viability of native AOT. Now, is this supported everywhere? Well, no. In fact, that's the native AOT compatibility you should expect. So gRPC fully supported, minimal APIs partially supported, and I would think that they will be fully supported by the time .NET 8 is out, but I don't know. Uh, Blazor Server, Signal R authentication, and MVC are not supported. Jot authentication will be supported soon, whatever that means. And then you have things like Course, Health Checks, all the modern stuff are supported, and all the old-fashioned stuff are not. So you can see where the love goes and where the direction goes. And the great thing about minimal APIs actually is that the model really lends itself into being something that can be native AOT able. Does that mean that MVC or Blazor server will never be supported? I don't know, but I can totally see minimal APIs be the first thing that gets support in terms of APIs that are native AOT able in .NET. Now, with all that said, what do you think? Were you aware of this feature and have you used it? Leave a comment down below and let me know. Well, that's all I had for you for this video. Thank you very much for watching. Special thanks to my Patreons for making this possible. If you want to support me, you can find the link in the description down below. Leave a like if you like this video, subscribe, more to like this and the bell as well. And I'll see you in the next video. Keep coding.